certainly having him healthy is a big component of this offense in 2018. Again, left side. Here comes Jawan Campbell, the first down and more across the midfield stripe. The Juco transfer from Hartnell down to the 40-yard line of Weber State. That's the type of explosiveness that the coaching staff is... Cal Poly could have been a beneficiary. 22-yard attempt for Alex Vega from the right hash, and he knocks it through. So Vega, the senior, with his first field goal attempt of the season from 22 yards out, a chip shot puts the Mustangs on the score. Seven yards on third and short, and the Wildcats have a fresh set of downs. Same formation, two receivers left side. The tight end comes in motion. That's Brady May. Under center comes Jinx, and again, the stretch run right side for Josh Davis. Ball comes loose. Mustangs think they have it. We'll await the signal. Davis lost it just shy of the 40. Cal Poly celebrating. Who's at the bottom of the pile? Mustangs have the football. The redshirt freshman coughs it up, and Cal Poly recovers a fumble at the Weber State 38-yard line. Katu Humphrey was at the bottom of the pile. Now the Mustang faithful get loud on third and short in hopes of a stop. Wildcats are three for eight on third down tonight. Two by two set. Ball resting near the right hash for Jake Constantine. Davis the featured back. He drops the throw. The rush coming. Bootleg right. Constantine is sacked inside the 20. Patrick Walker. Coming from the Mike linebacker spot and the Mustangs get a stop. Yeah, Patrick Walker, Matt Shotwell, both chasing after Constantine. Matt Shotwell got his hand on him, not able to take him down. Are trying and trying to wear down the defensive front of Weber State, but it hasn't happened just yet. Yeah, we'll see what happens as we get closer and closer to the fourth quarter, but I would expect a lot of Joe Prothrow here in this drive if it continues. One receiver to each side. Malcolm Davis comes in motion. Jeffrey drops to throw, has time, lobs one over the middle. Caught by J.J. Koski to the 30, near side 20, and down to the 15. He's that possession receiver, and the Mustangs are in the red zone for just the second time tonight. I tell you, if J.J. Koski was in a typical drop-back quarterback offense, he would be a star putting up big numbers because he is a great route runner defense. and being a big play factor. Jeffrey under center. He drops the throw. He'll run right side. Jake Jeffrey first down inside the five. Still on his feet. He's into the end zone. Touchdown, Cal Poly. He slipped out of a tackle inside the five, and the Mustangs have their first touchdown of 2018, and they're an extra point away from tying the game at 10. Now, I don't remember every single run that Jake Jeffrey had last year, but I would be hard-pressed to find a better run. Two by two set, third and eight. Weber State needs the Mustang 49 for a fresh set of downs. The snap is back. Constantine to throw. Steps up. Now the pocket collapses, and he's sacked again. Jason Lee. Wildcats go three and out. Big sack by Jason Lee. And Constantine, while he's comfortable in that pocket, he's got to get less. Three receivers, third and nine. Mustangs need the 46 for a fresh set of downs. Belt high snap to Jeffrey. Drops to throw. The rush coming. He lofts one down the right sideline for J.J. Koski. And he makes the catch at the 30-yard line of Weaver State. Tumbling to his knees. He extended his right arm to bring it in, and he hugged it. Third and a long four. One receiver to each side. Constantine under center. Play action. The rush coming. He lost the football, and he falls back on top of it inside the 20, I do believe, but he's brought down in the backfield. Nick Navarro jarred it loose. The Mustangs nearly fell on top of it inside the Weber State 20. Constantine fortunate to land back on top of that football. But the Mustangs will have a chance. 2.32 left to play. The defense rises to the occasion. Huge, huge play by Nick Navarro. So we had two or three pass uh, holdings and then we had a pass interference. And then the last 60 yard run, 
with inside linebacker, we checked, we checked the, uh, the pressure to the opposite pressure, and one guy ran the same pressure, which left the gap wide open. And the guy runs 60 yards. I mean, that, 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 that's not, that's stuff that just really, really hurts you, the mental mistakes. But our effort, you know, and if we keep the fight we had and the spirit that we played with tonight, we'll win some games. And I think you have to take that positive from this performance and say, hey, some good things can still happen as long as you allow yourself to continue to progress as a football team. And I think we progressed this week. We didn't win, and it's no fun to lose. And you don't take any uh, consolation in it. But what you do is you try to look at the positives that you had, and you try to go forward with them. You know, I think we ought to be able to run the ball between the tackles better than we did, for example. Uh, we ran the ball in the perimeter better than we have. Uh, Malcolm Davis doesn't get a lot of credit for how he blocked, but he did a tremendous job at slot tonight. I think the wideouts did a good job. I think Jake did some good things. You know, and everybody wants to look at, you know, all the time in games, people look at the one bad thing that people do and we forget about the good things that happened. Unfortunately, the bad things that we did tonight <clears throat> directly led to us probably not winning. We've got to clean those things up. There's no question about it. How would you like Jake's performance stepping in for uh, Khalil? Well, I mean, I think all the games that he played last year, obviously, experience has helped him. I think he did some good things. You know, Jake is exactly when, on his touchdown run. That's exactly who he is. He's not the fastest. He's not the strongest. He's not the biggest. But he might be the toughest. He's got, he's got a competitive attitude that you have to love and a no-quit thing in him. I mean, he's totally crushed about the last play right now. But he's going to have to look at the positives that he did and learn from the negatives and move forward because he's probably going to play again next week. You know, and I thought he did some good things throwing. I bet there's a couple that he wished he had back. But he did some good things. I mean, I had to like it overall the way that uh, Jake played. I think we just got it between the tackles. We got to play much, much better. Like I said, we blocked the perimeter much better than we have uh, against those guys in the past. But we pretty much didn't have very much inside tonight. And you know, our offense is designed to make people defend the entire field. And you have to be able to get the fullback going a little bit in order to do that. Got something going with JJ there in the second half. 127 yards, I think, career high. Anything in particular you guys saw, or they were just able to get? I mean, we've said all along that JJ is a great player. I mean, JJ's got the ability to be a very good football player. You know, he's tough, he's fast. Uh, you know, he has a tremendous amount of confidence, um, and those things are all positives uh, as a wide receiver. Uh, you know, and I think that you know, going into the game, he was challenged. You know, we told him he was going to have to make some plays if we were going to win the game. And I thought, you know, he rose up and took that challenge, and I thought overall played a very good football game. But unfortunately, it wasn't enough for us. Any update on Khalil moving forward? Sounds like there's potential for him to come back this season at least. Yeah, he'll play this year. I mean, yeah. I, I, you know, my hope, and you know, we say, we, you know, for me, the worst case scenario would be Eastern Washington, so we get him back when we start playing. But I'm not going to play him if he's not Khalil Jenkins. You get what I'm saying? You know, I'm not going to play him because he says he's ready. He's got to show us that he's physically ready to do the things that we know he can do in order for us to say we're going to play him.